Welcome to Arena Church. We're so glad that you're with us today. We've got an amazing service planned for you, but we're going into our worship now, so we'd encourage you to sing along.
burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. Yeah, I see. time of worship we've enjoyed. The 27th of December, our last Sunday gathering of the year. And what a year. We've had to uh, rethink, reorganise, replan, but God has helped us 
and the church although the buildings have closed has never closed every Sunday we brought worship to God the word of God's been declared and we're thankful that even this year people have stepped into faith and the kingdom has been extended I'm reminded that as we come to endings and then think about beginnings the Bible encourages us to take some moments to reflect to remember and to rejoice in all that God has done. In the Old Testament, when there was often a literal expression of worship, there were memorial stones built, there were sacrifices made, there were stones that were erected to God's glory that would remind people in the future of what God had done in the past. And in the book of Samuel, the people of God had won a mighty victory over their enemies, the Philistines, and the prophet Samuel led them in a moment of reflection and thanks. Coincidentally, they called the sacrifice stone Ebenezer, nothing to do with the Christmas carol story, but it literally means so far as the Lord helped us. And in our rush to get rid of this year and to move into the future and perhaps uh, download a few fresh resolutions and determinations, in our rush at times to be thankful that we can forget the past, let's also take to heart where the Bible encourages us to remember that God has been good. And in this challenging year, God has never been anything less than faithful, than merciful, than loving and steadfast. And for that, Lord, we thank you. And we bring our Ebenezer as Arena Church to you today and say thank you so far as the Lord helped us and we look to the future with confidence. Let's pray. And so, Father, thank you for being with us this year, this amazingly challenging year in every strata of society. And yes, no less so in our expression of Christian public worship and the ability to come together. Thank you for the media team that have served us so brilliantly since March, enabling online services. Thank you that the word of God has gone out every week. Thank you that people have had their faith restored and people have stepped into the gift of salvation for the first time. Thank you that you've held us together as one and that we're positioned as your church to go forward into all the opportunities that 2021 present to us. We take a moment to stop and to reflect and to say again, Lord, thank you for the past that takes us into our God-ordained future. Bless us, bless your word as Christian brings it right now. May we all lean in and be changed again. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Here's what's happening at Arena. On the 4th of January, we have our 21 days of prayer and fasting starting, and that will be to the 24th of January. We also have Alpha starting on the 13th, and that will be for seven weeks, and you can get signed up on the website. There's a connect card. If you're new and you've recently found us, that is a great place to start. We also have a prayer request section. If you've got a need, one of our team would love to be praying for you, and you can do all of that through the website. There's lots of ways that you can give, and they are also found on the website. We're now going into the, into the One Minute Mingle, so if you'd like to take time to say hello to someone, and after that, our lead pastor will be coming to us with a word.
Well, good morning, everybody. It really is great to be with you today, and I trust you've had a blessed Christmas. For some of you, it's been very, very different. I get that, but I really pray that today's message will just help you and encourage you, and even for some, lift you today. It's great that we're able to be online. Normally, we'd be meeting in person across all our locations, but we made the decision to gather together online just because we, it was two days after our Christmas Day service. And so, you know, I want to, in, in readiness, say a Happy New Year to you in readiness. And I'm really believing that God is going to help us navigate 2021. What a year 2020 has been. When I was thinking about this last message that I've got to preach into the heart and life of the church, and also if you're new today, please, it's great to welcome you. I just want to, was taken to a passage of scripture that's quite obscure, and I really do, with boldness, believe that I've got a word that I want to share to you and with you. And it's found in Genesis in chapter 16, so why don't you turn in your Bibles, it's going to come on the screen. There's quite a few verses, so just stay with me. And as I said, it's quite an obscure story, and I will give some context to it. Are you ready? Great. So it says in verse 1, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave, and perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had lived was living in Canaan for 10 years, Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. And he slept with Hagar, and she conceived. And when she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Verse 5, Then Sarah said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms. And now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Abram said, your slave is in your hands. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that was beside the road to Shur. Verse 8, and he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from? And where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. Verse 10, the angel then added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. I want to take this obscure story and, you know, there's some unusual practices within it that could seem inappropriate today with regards to slave and handing a slave over to sleep with your husband and all I can simply say is it was the practice of the day. There wasn't anything uh, untoward. It was just usual in that time. And of course, it's not usual now. We don't believe in this stuff in Arena Church. But the lessons that we can learn from this passage are invaluable. Hagar, as we see from this story, was wanting to flee. She was running away from her present situation, which was causing her and her son all kinds of issues. I can only imagine that she was being blanked. Some commentator says about these verses, the word mistreated means that she was receiving the cold shoulder. And then perhaps the next day, there was explosions and tantrums. Basically, she was walking on eggshells. It was a very difficult situation that she found herself in. And she was in despair. And as a result of this despair, she decided to flee. And we find the story that an angel comes to her and has a conversation with her and asks her two questions from verse 8 that I believe we will do well to answer as we close off this turbulent year. The first question he asked her is this, where have you come from? And the second question that he followed with is this, where are you going? So I'd like this morning to just address those two questions and contextualize it in our lives, particularly in light of the year that we are departing from. So, where have you come from? Said another way is this, where have you been? Now, I've heard that 
uh, question asked many times. I've got an older brother, his name's Lee, and uh, he's three years older than me. And as typical boys, we were often up to mischief. There were many times that we came in late into our home, and mum would say to us, where have you two been? It's actually only in later years did we reveal where we had actually been, and uh, that's caused some fun and revelry and some surprise in terms of some of the things that we were up to. But you get the point. Where have you come from? Where have you been? Because before we can walk into our God-ordained and planned future, we have to first face our pasts. Now this year, many people have been in dark places. There's been hidden recesses that people have gone to this year. Caves of despair and pain. Not actual caves, but emotional caves. Valleys of tears and uncertainty. Some people have drank too much. They've ate too much. I'm not just talking at Christmas. They've binged on the TV. They've lacked discipline. They may have been reading and watching very unhelpful things. And what I've also realised in this season of lockdown and over this year is that some people have become very cynical and sceptical, suspicious, argumentative. They've become frustrated, tense and agitated. But I want to say to us, from what the angel said to Hagar, where have you come from? We must face our pasts, both this year and over the years. You see, some people, if we go beyond this year, their pasts speak of and shout, out, shout aloud addiction, poverty, criminality. Some people are arrogant in their past, indulgent. There's immorality, divorce, estrangement. You fill in the blank what your past consists of. Some people think in their past, I just need to forget it. I need to go la, 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 and it'll go away. It won't. What I've realized is this. We have to face our pasts. We must not be afraid of the darkness of our pasts. Because as we come to God again, as you come to God with your past, the past of 2020 and the past of you know, previous years, as you come before God with your darkness, He is not put off by your darkness, but watch His light invade and extinguish the darkness. God is comfortable with our pasts and with the emotions attached to those experiences. The Bible is filled with people of questionable pasts. Don't read the Bible with rose-tinted spectacles. Read it for what it is. It's earthy. This is why we have stories even like this in the Scriptures to teach us. And I love that God has allowed these to be in His breathed Word because He wants us to see their lives and not just the good bits. You see, the past, my past, your past, cannot be changed forgotten, edited, or erased. It can only be accepted. We have to come to the point where we say, this is who I am, and this is where I have been. You know, change comes, and I'm not a counsellor, but I realised in my own life, and watching people who flourish, when change comes, when they come to Christ, that's the starting point. But real change then begins to take place on the inside out, when people come with brutal honesty and vulnerability, where they free themselves from the embarrassment, the failure and regret of their pasts. Oh my goodness, we all probably have something in our past that we regret and we're embarrassed by, but we have to face our past with brutal honesty and vulnerability. But we don't because we are often more concerned about what others think about us. I've read a number of books by the Christian author Brennan Manning. In one of those books he wrote this, true freedom comes when we are no longer, we no longer have the need to be special in other people's eyes because we know we are lovable and good enough in Christ. We get bound up by what other people think about us. The Bible says it this way, 
The fear of man is a snare. It's a trap. And if we are forever thinking what are other people thinking about us, saying about us, we will be trapped. We will be ensnared. And this will not allow brutal honesty and vulnerability. We should live for the applause of one. Now, we must not let our past define us, but in, instead we must let our past distinguish us. I'm not talking about if you're a previous addict, you wear it like a badge, but let it distinguish you because you have learned some things and you can help others. You know, we will never know where God is taking us unless we are first willing to leave where we are. We've got to leave behind the past of 2020. You know, some people are incredibly disappointed that special events, weddings, dedications, special birthdays, they didn't happen. And guys, I'm really sorry about that. I'm sad for that. We've had people that have died. We've not been able to have proper funerals, memorial services for. We've not been able to gather as we normally would. But can I say to you, there's no point as living in that regret. We've got to leave it behind. And we've got to move forward. We've got to let go of our pasts of the year and previous years. Before I go to the second question, I want to say this as well. It's very important that we forgive ourselves. If you've been one of those who've been overindulging, doing all kinds of things, I want to encourage you just at the end of my message to just, you know, find a place where you can just quietly ask God to forgive you. And he will. Because Jesus declares who the Son sets free is free indeed. Only as we find freedom are we able to then answer the second question. Where have you come from? The second question is this. Where are you going? Where are you going? And this is an apt question to be asked as we approach 2021. You see, Hagar was running away. And in her mind, she was just saying to herself, if I can just get away, then my life will be better. And interestingly, the Bible does not record where she was going because she didn't know. <laughs> Have you got that? She had no idea where she was going. She just left. She departed. This was not Hagar having a vision for a new life, compelled by a dream. It was the scenario of the grass is greener. It's got to be greener over there. But let me tell you, the grass is usually only greener because another man or woman is watering and nurturing their lawn. <laughs> you know, a change of environment doesn't necessarily mean a change of heart. And the angel comes to her and says to her, Hagar, I want you to go back to your mistress, mistress and submit to her, verse 9. You see, Hagar's future blessing was found in her connections. Then the angel went on to say in verse 10, the angel added, and I will increase your descendants so much that they too will be so numerous to count. It was only as she returned to Sarah that some blessing flowed. Now all I simply want to say is this. I'm so grateful that many people are connected, more than we realise I'm aware there are people who don't post anything on chat, but you're online and you're listening. You've been in midweek. You're on small groups. But I want to encourage us to remain connected. Stay connected to your location, wherever that may be, your group, your ministry, because from this flows blessing. I am blessed. Caroline and I am blessed and the kids are blessed because of the connections to the house. Find a house that you become connected to. And we, I would, I'm saying this not as a pastor. We, were, we live like this even before I was ever a pastor. There's something that happens as we flow. And there's something, sorry, there's something that flows to us when we're connected to something. Now, people get disconnected and they say, no, I'll do it my way. I know better. And invariably, that attitude leads to a heartache. Hagar needed a fresh vision. What about you? I'm not talking about some resolutions, but I'm talking about some fresh intentions for 2021. I've been asking myself some questions even now, and I'm determined to answer them as I approach 2021. Questions like, what, what is one thing I'm going to change? What one thing am I going to be grateful for and I'm going to praise God through 2021 for? What new thing am I 
going to try. You know, we need to begin to get a vision once again for our lives. We've got to know where we're going. I want to encourage you prophetically and release you to dream again. To dream again. Because some of you have lost your focus. Some of you have allowed your dream to be stolen from you. Dream again in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17 to 18. I love these verses because God says that he's going to pour out his spirit again on all people. And then he goes on to say, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. I seem to be doing both at the moment, visions and dreams. So I must, that must make me middle-aged. And then he says in verse 18, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. This verse is telling us that there will be visions and dreams that will be given to both men and women, young and old, that will direct us into our future. God has a future for our lives. Let me repeat that. God has a future for our lives. Can I raise an amen? Can I raise a yes in you today? God has a future for your life. Don't allow the pause button to be pressed on your life. There may be a pause on travel. There may be a pause on holidays. There may be a pause on work. There may even continue to be a pause on gathering life. But still, can I encourage you to find again, to dream again, purpose, vision, dreams in your heart. If you don't, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 29 verse 18, without a vision, the people perish. We don't want to perish, do we? Oh, we don't want to perish. Just get in the chat now. That just, or just to the person at the side of you and said, I don't want to perish. I want to thrive. I don't want to perish. I want to thrive. Well, if you want to thrive, you've got to get a vision. And I want to encourage you with just four steps. Now, I don't normally do something like this, but it really came to me afresh as I was preparing this. And I really believe this will help you to know where you're going. So the four steps are this, get up, lock up, speak up, and move up. You might want to repeat it with me. Get up, lock up, speak up, and move up. What do I mean by that? Well, get up. Some of you are still in the mire. You're still in your depression. I understand there's some challenges around that. But begin to get up. Begin to shower. Begin to clothe yourself. Begin to fill your heart and mind with good things. Get up again. Okay, get up, begin to get up and begin to look up. The verse that's really helped me, Caroline knows this over the year. The Bible verse says, I think it's Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes. We've got to look up and then we've got to speak up. We've got to confess good things. We've got to confess that I'm loved, I'm valued. God has a plan and a future for my life. And then I need to begin to walk into my destiny. You know, we don't get to choose our upbringings, our environments, our circumstances, or the way we were born or our lives. But we do get to choose our attitude. And I'm not just coming with you like a slick motivational guy. I'm coming as, as, as the, as with the word of the Lord, a pastor with the word of the Lord. And this is what I want to say to you. Your attitude determines your altitude. If you want to go further, if you want to do something good with your life, it starts here. It will determine how far you climb. So I want to encourage you again to get up, lock up, speak up and move up. As I draw this message to a close, I want to tell you that God has a great plan for you. Psalm 18 verse 19 says he's brought me into a spacious place and he's rescued me because he has delighted in me. Some need to take that as a prophetic promise. Others, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 needs to ring in your hearts again. Where God says, "For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now I want to conclude with a reading from a man from the Bible who's been preached about over the decades quite a bit. And yet it's an unusual story written into a book that's not easy to read. And I'm talking about the man Jabez. Because it says there in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9 and 10, Jabez was a better man than his brothers, a man of honour, 
And his mother named him Jabez. Oh, the pain, saying, a painful birth. I bore him in great pain. And Jabez prayed to the God of Israel, bless me, oh, bless me. Give me land, large tracts of land, and provide your personal protection. Don't let evil hurt me. And God gave him what he asked for. They're powerful verses, those last few verses. You see, Jabez dealt with his past. He was named pain, full of pain. He didn't allow this name to hold him back. This name distinguished him. And he got up and he looked up and he spoke up and he moved up. And God gave him what he asked. I'm asking you today for you to experience his wonderful love. For you to experience his forgiveness. Doesn't matter where you've come from. So where you're going. You may have come from the doldrums. You may have come from darkness. I want to tell you, God loves you. He died for you. He made a way for you. And you need to enter into this prayer in a moment. For other people who have become Christians, don't allow your head to get down, but move forward into all that God has for you. I want to tell you, God has a plan for your life. And I want to take this prayer of Jabez, if I may. But before I do that, I wonder if you just bow your heads and your heart. Because I want to pray. I get a sense already. There are people, as they close off this year, you need to respond with a radical decision. And the radical decision is I'm going to follow Christ. So I would, would wonder if you'd pray this prayer with me. Why don't you just pray it where you are? Just say, dear Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I thank you for giving all for me. I'm sorry for my life, the way it's turned out, how I've behaved. I'm in a hole. I'm in a mess, I'm in a pit, I'm in despair, I'm in depression. Oh, but thank you, God, that I've heard today this message that you came for me. You came for men and women like me. And I simply put my trust in you and I ask you to take hold of this fragile life and do something wonderful. I ask Jesus that you forgive me of my sin, you deal with my past and you'd walk me into my future. I want to tell you today, friend, if you prayed that prayer, would you please click on the screen? Would you let one of the hosts know? They'll pray for you if you need prayer without getting into all the personals. They'll help you. Just click on the screen where you are now. It's very, very important. Why don't you make this decision before you enter into 2021 to make this radical decision to follow Christ? It may be that you're far away from God. You once knew God. We use this phrase, backslidden. It just means you've gone back. Why don't you move forward? Why don't you make the decision to follow Christ again? Come on, click on the screen, every one of you. And as I close, I said that I wanted to take the prayer of Jabez because there's three things that he identified. And I want to speak this as a blessing over you. And if you're comfortable, only if you're comfortable, why don't you stand to your feet with me? Why don't you stand to your feet where you are? If you're with your husband or your wife and they know the Lord or with your children, as I know there's many families that gather why don't you gather as a family? If you've got that little baby, gather them in your arms. Because I'm really going to speak this blessing over you. As we leave 2020, we're going to enter into 2021. Because Jabez, Jabez prayed for God's presence, his provision, and his protection. And we do so too. So stand to your feet. I want to pray this today. Lord, we thank you. And we pray now for your presence. Your presence to be known. A knowing, an awareness, wherever we go, that you are with us. We pray for provision, for money, for resource, for a job, for new jobs, for promotions, for new businesses, for provision to come. And we pray for protection of health over our children, over our homes, over our families, over our businesses, and over our church. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? Because I spoke it like I'm in your front room. Do you receive it now in Jesus' name? Can I say on behalf of Caroline and myself, a happy new year to you all. And I want to remind you that I'm praying for you. I believe in you. And I love you. God bless you.
So we're thankful to Christian for that last public message into the life of Arena and beyond for 2020. And we look forward to the word going out again in the new year. We love to give in Arena Church. It's part of our response to an amazingly generous giving God. And all the directions in how you can give online are available uh, for you to access. We appreciate your faithful giving, no more so than in 2020. And you'll be blessed as you give unto the Lord. And so, as we come to this final service, and as we look forward in a few days' time to a new year, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon every one of us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Shelter, I was an orphan. You call.